What a blessing to all of you. I had hoped to go to the open air pulpit and make this particular video, but the weather's been so horrific over the last few weeks and months, it wouldn't have been possible, let alone even wise or sensible. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a quick video uh, inside of the car and just tell a very strange story which has just happened to me. So January the 16th, I went into a Christian bookstore and I spoke to the owner and I said, I've got some books which you may be interested in selling. One was against uh, Calvinism, one was against the Jesuits, one was against Freemasonry. Did a deal with him on the commission rates, which isn't very high, but there we are, that's another issue altogether. And uh, went back about a month later, six or seven weeks later, to see how they were selling. Couldn't find them. Not in the local author section, which is where they should be. So I thought this was very strange. So the uh, woman in the shop was speaking to the owner on the phone. He was saying, try here, try there, so on and so forth. They couldn't find them. I spent 15 minutes on my hands and knees trying to find my books in the uh, local author section and elsewhere. Couldn't find them. Very strange. So I thought I'll leave it for a few more weeks, let the owner come back, have a look for them, so on and so forth, and I'll go back again. I went back two days ago. Again, he wasn't in the shop. Okay, fair enough. He's a busy man. Spoke to a man and a woman who obviously worked for him. Any idea where my books are? My name's, you know, so on and so forth. These, these are the books, so on and so forth. Get the old computer system up. Yeah, they're still available for sale. I'm not sure where they are. So again, I go to the local author section. I start rummaging around, my hands and my feet, <laughs> trying to find my books. They're not anywhere. Nowhere to be found. Very bizarre. So I thought I need to go back again when he's going to be at the shop. So just finished our uh, prayer meeting. Just finished the book of Romans also. And this coming... Uh, Sunday, Lord willing, I will start the book of James, 10.30 uh, UK time, so please join us live, and every other Thursday, or every other Thursday, same time, so twice a week, and uh, then I'll do the book of John, probably middle of next month, so anyway, so I go into the shop after the prayer meeting, like I say, and uh, I walk in there, he sees me, I see him, you know, hi David, James, blah, 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 body language was interesting, eye contact was limited, but that could be for all sorts of reasons, so I say to him, uh, any news of my books? He looks kind of blank at me. He says, oh, uh, we can't find them. I thought this is very strange. So I said to him, have you misplaced them? He says, no. I said to him, have they been stolen? Well, all three of them, he said. So I thought, where are they? What's going on? I was, quite, I was kind of grieved because I wanted these books to reach a decent sized audience. A lot of ignorance in the UK about the Jesuits, the, uh, the Calvinist view, the so-called doctrines of grace and the Illuminati, the Freemasonry, so on and so forth. A lot of people need to be aware of this, such ignorance in this country. And the books weren't particularly expensive. I get a very low royalty rate, incidentally, on the books that I sell. Very low royalty, but that's another issue, like I say, for another day. So, I want to know where my books are. You know, I don't want him just to sort of get rid of me. And I'm asking him two or three questions, which I may put at the end of this video, so you can listen to yourself as to what you make of it all. And he's saying to me, never happened before. We've never had books go disappear, that have just vanished before. I thought, you've either thrown them away, you've put them in a drawer and you can't find them, or something else has happened to them. Now, this store has been in this town for a long time. It's passed hands over the years, different people have bought the shop and you know, renamed it, so on and so forth. But this isn't like a new shop. This guy's a seasoned store owner or manager, whatever he is. Now, this is the second time I've had a trouble, that I've had trouble with a Christian bookstore. I found another bookstore not too far away from here. I took a book in middle of, uh, late last year. It was the, uh, the Lincoln book, the Jesuits and the Catholic Church involved with Lincoln's assassination. And I went into the shop, spoke to the owner, and left the book with her. Went back a few weeks later, they couldn't find the book. I thought, right, this is interesting. So, uh, did some street work with Patrick. The actual woman herself, the big boss, wasn't there. I was told to come back later. Went back three hours later. We can't find your book, but here's the money anyway. Get out sort of thing, don't come back. <laughs> So that was a strange business. I went back the following month with another book on Calvinism, which I need to phone up this week and see if, they, if they've lost that as well. So they paid me the money for the book that they couldn't find. Then they found it. Okay, fair enough. Could just, no, that, may, that may just be a one-off. No big deal. Let it go. I'll go back later this week and see if the Calvin book is sold or not. But the shop I've just been into, didn't, different town, different, uh, you know, different altogether. They can't find the books. Never happened before. So four or five times in the recording, he says, we'll just pay you, we'll just pay you, we'll just pay you, we'll just pay you, we'll just, pay you. We'll just, pay you. We'll just get out of the shop, basically. So I thought, fine. So 
This is the second Christian shop that I've had trouble with concerning my books. Now, these, these shops are ecumenical, I know that, which means anybody, I would imagine, is able to have their say, I would think, right? He takes a book, or the books, he puts them onto his system, they're available for sale, they vanish. We never know, of course, this side of heaven, whether he just threw them away, misplaced and what have you, but he said to me, it's never happened before, uh, so either the devil's got in there and just throw my books away so nobody else could find them, he's deliberately destroyed them because he's read the back and thinks they're too controversial, or somebody has misplaced them accidentally, who knows, no idea. So this is a strange business, it hasn't left a very good taste in my mouth, I shan't be going back to this shop again. On a plus side, I've just finished my first Christian novel, it's a 42 chapter book, I've got uh, uh, Patrick and uh, Sister Helen and uh, Brother Martin proofreading the manuscript, the first draft, I hope it's going to be okay, they picked up some things I've got to slightly rewrite and reword and so on and so forth. It's gone so well that I've actually started to write volume two and I'm 40 pages into volume two, so I'm really pleased. And also, somewhat, unex uh, somewhat unexpectedly, there could be a third spin-off, a romantic slant to the character that I'm writing about. So, praise the Lord, everything's going okay as far as the book side of things uh, is concerned. But the local bookstores, Christian bookstores, so-called Christian bookstores, haven't been particularly helpful. They've either lost them or thrown them away, or who knows what. The, Big chain stores won't touch self-published authors, so if you live in the UK, don't bother going to, you know, a store or you know a, a, a train a, a chain of shops. They won't touch them. They want publishing houses only, which is fair enough. So you just you know you, you roll with what you've got. No point uh, getting on you know getting upset about it, which I'm not. I'm more I'm more baffled, I think, and I'm more uh, disappointed that my books have been removed basically from circulation, at least at a local level. Thankfully, we got Amazon. We got some other ventures and trying to build more as we go along. I'm new to all this. This is my first re really, this is my first year really of coming outside of Amazon and elsewhere and trying to get into uh, brick and mortar stores. But it's been a bad start, a really bad start, a very strange start. He paid me, which is fair enough, uh, but I didn't really want his money. I wanted the books to get into the local community quite honestly. You know, I wasn't, I didn't go there to get paid today. I want the books to sell get some positive feedback, even constructive. I'll take it on the chin, you know, if something doesn't sound right, I'll change it around or what have you. I mean, the Jesuits are so powerful. And most people got no idea who they even are. The Freemasons, yeah, they're a bit more famous or infamous. The Illuminati, yeah, to some extent. Calvinism, I mean, how many people, how many books have been produced against the tulip system? Not many, really. So my three books, all very different, very diverse. You know, I was hoping they would get into the local uh, Christian market, the local audience. It hasn't happened, so it is what it is. No point uh, crying over spilt milk, <laughs> as they say. But uh, the devil has, has shut the door on this avenue of things for now, which, that of course, is the Lord's permissive will. Uh, I won't go back again. And the other shop, another part of town, which has got my book on Calvin, if that's gone missing as well, I won't bother going back to these people again. You know, dust your shoes off or get the dust off your shoes, don't return. Uh, but uh, I thought this might possibly happen. And I would have been more happier if the owner of the shop had said to me, thank you for coming in, we're not interested. Yes, you may be a local author, and I am, but we don't think there's a market or we don't think this is very ecumenical, and therefore there's the door. I would have said, fine, you know, no hard feelings. I'm pretty you know, resilient. I'm not some, sort of, you know, uh, Johnny come lately kind of guy. But... Uh, his body language was very interesting, and I thought he's either thrown them away, which is quite likely, misplaced them intentionally, stolen, maybe, but he said to me, it never happened before, can't understand it. Like I say, more than once he said to me, you know, how much do we owe you, blah, 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 and he paid me, I signed a receipt, and left the shop. So, not a good start as far as uh, brick and mortar stores uh, is concerned, but uh, yeah, this goes back to the whole sort of ecumenical church movement, which I've been speaking about for a long time, and sometimes, maybe too negatively, I don't know, but I've, I've learned the hard way again today that uh, if, you're trying to get in, if you try to get into this sort of market, it's not easy, it's very difficult. It takes me back to the middle part of last year when I did my King James book, which I should, should have brought with me, it's actually at home, and I contacted Jack Chicks, uh, 
ministry in California just to get some advice about uh, the layout or the publishing, the marketing, so on and so forth. And I thought there'd be an, there would, I thought there might be a response to a King James believer like myself, a street preacher like myself. Uh, no response, nothing whatsoever. I then contacted Peter Rutman's crowd in Pensacola again just for some advice, some feedback. I said, would you be prepared to at least publish a book and give me a, you know, a, a generous royalty or a modest royalty? No response at all. So all these people, all these industries, they're like the Freemasons. They're all sewn up. This takes me back to when I was a young man trying to get my orchestra off the ground, contacting music agents, other places, other people to uh, get my CDs distributed. And it was a closed shop. It's like the old trade union days, the closed shop. Uh, which was a real problem if you weren't a member of the, of the trade union. So I've had to sort of, once again, learn the hard way that the, the big boys will not help you. If you're not part of their system, if you're not part of their clique, they won't come to your aid at all. It's going to be doing it yourself like I've done. I've had to teach myself how to, how to produce books, paperbacks, ebooks, hardbacks, marketing them myself using social media. And the big boys, the big girls, those famous people I just mentioned to you, will not help you at all. You know, for whatever the reason, they won't help you. So, you know, you've got to do things yourself. You've got to make your own luck, as they say. I don't like that term, make your own luck. But you know, you know what I mean when I say that. You've got to push yourself. You've got to promote yourself. You've got to do everything yourself. You won't get any help from uh, the big people. It goes back to the scriptures, really, when Jesus, you know, chose his apostles. They weren't from organized religion. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors, uh, ordinary people. And that's very, very telling, isn't it? That he chose himself, ordinary people, to represent him. And of course, their disciples and their disciples, right up until Constantine, when it all became very official, very uh, uh, church, very churchy, and church anity, somebody once called it. It all changed at that time. But uh, that's all. Not complaining. I'm not uh, bitter or anything. You know, praise the Lord. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty upbeat. I've just done a 16-week a, a study on Romans Live twice a week. A tremendous blessing for me to do that. And James will start on Sunday. That'll be going out twice a week, Sundays and Thursdays. Like I say, I'll do the book of John, Lord willing, somewhere in April time. And that could run maybe six months or so, I don't know. So we keep pushing on. We're doing street work. When the weather gets better, we'll go back onto the streets, get some more uh, conversations with people. It's still cold. It's still pretty miserable. We're still officially in winter time, so it's not the best time of year to uh, do too much open air stuff. Unless you want to get a cold all the time. <laughs> Or get run down but i just thought i'd put all these thoughts on camera now because these are strange things that happened to me uh i mean what's the chance of two christian store two christian stores losing my books and then just paying me basically to get rid of me it's kind of weird isn't it uh but they have paid me i appreciate that but it wasn't about the money i wanted my books to get into the local economy the local uh, community people should be aware of these things i mean the jesuits they're so powerful like i say and they got such a they're so powerful that they're, they're unknown they are basically unaccountable and all the other groups I've just discussed also there's not much stuff from a biblical perspective against uh, such movements and the King James book I mean I'm a King James man myself I street preach myself and you would have thought that either Chick he's now dead of course or Rutman who's now dead of course you would have thought their you know their their systems in place they've got quite a substantial you know outreach would have said yeah we'll take on James's book print it you know charge a flat no, no interest at all flat rate royalty no interest at all and yet they sell other books from authors who are, not, who are not King James. Some hold to once saved, you can be lost. I don't believe that. So I'm once saved, always saved. I'm pre-millennial, I'm pre-tribulational. <laughs> I'm a street preacher. I'm a King James man. And yet Rutman and Chick, no interest. No interest at all. So that tells you a lot about these types of people, uh, how they treat uh, outsiders, which is fine. I'm like Jeremiah. You know, what did he say? I'm going to uh, worship alone. I won't sit in the assembly of the mockers, which is fine by me. You know, I do my own thing anyway, but uh, just an interesting couple of stories to share with all of you. But on the, on the plus side, I got my first novel done, amen. Hope to get it out early summer, and I hope it'll be a blessing and an interest to all of you. It's a Christian uh, spy novel romance story, so I've got three parts <laughs> to that book. It's gone incredibly well, and like I said, I'm well into volume two, which will be probably released next year, I'd imagine. So in spite of all the big giants out there not helping me at all i've done it myself with the lord's help amen and that's how it's always been it's always been david and goliath basically it's been the small man against the big man and the apostles had this didn't they all of their days and uh, the, the prophets had this all of the days and jesus had it of course you know he wasn't part of organized religion per se 
yes, you went to the temple, went to the synagogues, of course, you honored the law and fulfilled it, but the actual services, the worship, uh, part of his, you know, his time on the earth with, with the apostles, the prayer, you know, the praying, the fasting, all those things were done mostly outside of the four wall structured system. Uh, of course, Paul says the Lord isn't worshipped or he's not, uh, he's not worshipped in places where uh, with temples, so on and so forth, slight paraphrase. But anyway, I better, better say, I better wrap it up now. I've been on this for 15 minutes. So just let you know what's going on. Uh, I want to get back on to, back to the open a pulpit when it's better weather, do some more videos like this and uh, some spin-off studies from Romans which I hope to do later on but I just thought I'd share with you what's happened today and late last year concerning two Christian bookstores and I'll let, I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to what you make of the whole thing so very bizarre but let's push on amen join us coming uh, this coming Sunday 10 30 uh 10 30 a.m uk time book of James like I say and then book of John sometime next month. And that's all. And bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.